Welcome to Living on the Ocean. You are not watching strange spaceships that we saw flying to the sky. You're watching a Portuguese man of war. Small ones that we met in the Mediterranean Sea, floating in an absolutely blue out without a ripple. Actually, we were swimming when we saw them. But we got out of the water fast because we felt something was maybe a bit strange about these things. I never seen Portuguese men of war before. And I thought they were very fascinating creatures with their membrane lifted up above the water surface where you can see they're just hanging there in the surface of the water with the water drips on them. Beautiful pictures and beautiful creatures that kind of sail along on the ocean. Just like us, using our sails in that blew out everything we had to bring the proud catamaran from Croatia back to Portugal. Having no idea that some years later those animals almost costed my life and I had to press the rescue button on my inReach and a helicopter was gonna come over to pick me up off my boat. But back to now, back to our series. You will later understand why I put this in, because we met so many Portuguese men of war on this trip. If we sailing twilight, we've left St. Martin and we had no west winds. We fought to the uh, squalls, we fought to the depressions and we kind of working our way up to the northern part of the Atlantic hoping for west wind but before we can do that we will first reach an area with absolutely no wind in it the center of the high the center that we were gonna motor through in a day but that center had different plans and we motored up and the center just came with us so we motored again and motored again and the center of the high followed us on this trip so long and we were in so long period of time without much wind but what a beautiful shots we could make and how beautiful it actually was if it wasn't for the worry of depressions coming from the west but Charlie our weather router he confirmed there was nothing coming from the west there was no danger about to happen I was worried about that because being in the middle of the Atlantic so far up north it is just absolutely strange to see nothing coming from the west. This was an absolute strange time to cross the Atlantic but with wonderful and beautiful pictures and as it always is afterwards it's the worries we have of everything will work out that take away so much of the fun because what we saw was as how Cheryl explains it in this video one of the best days that she ever had on the ocean a complete blue out and that's why I left the text in when she talks about it herself so this will be the first part of living on the ocean where you hear the voice of Cheryl now sitting in our small cabin filling in the log the boat is moving too much for her to sit on the side to do the dishes we have no running sink yet in this boat and the boat was moving and slamming too much in the waves to sit on the side and do the dishes so it piled up but soon soon that would all change when we reach the middle of the high What a difference a day makes. Yesterday, splashing waves, 25 knots of wind. Today, oil slick sea. Super calm, stunningly beautiful. Full of Portuguese man of war. Just stunning. Apart from the roar of the engine in the background. This is a little piece of something that people just will never ever see. I can't resist to start playing with the reflections of the boat where it's just almost as clear in the water as it is above 
that swimming in this would give you the idea that you are actually floating in space when you're underwater. But with the Portuguese men of war and the experience I had with them, the immense pain, I would never jump in that quick when I've seen Portuguese men of war again. There they come, by the hundreds, and probably without exaggerating, by the thousands. There are so many Portuguese men of war. They are jellyfish. They have massive long tentacles. And if I'm correct in my information, I feel free to correct me and improve on this in the comments. But if I'm correct, they swim in three layers. The top ones are the catchers, and then they're feeders and breeders underneath. They make an immense net with their tentacles that can be over 50 meters long. They are a dangerous, dangerous creature. And they're growing massively, because it was the turtles that ate them. They ate jellyfish, and that's why they mistake plastic. But they're also beautiful, and the reflection in this blue out is absolutely fascinating me. The days go by and we have our beautiful sunsets as you use from us. Motoring through this and coming to the other side, thinking that we would get west wind for a couple of hours and then it would catch up with us. It will bring some new squalls, it will bring some new rainbows that Cheryl absolutely loves. And what does Cheryl do when there are no rainbows? She makes them herself. And the days pass, we get these beautiful sunsets and sunrises. We motor a lot, we don't have that much fuel so we are worried about that, if we can make it. Because it looks like at the Azores we need to motor again. And every bit of west wind that we can use, we use. And we make twilight sail higher and higher into the wind. And I work on the rigging. I play with the sails, I trim the mast farther backwards. And we are finally coming to a spot in the ocean where in 2016 I pressed the SOS on my inReach. I needed help. It's not the best quality film, but I let you hear it as I spoke about it with the emotions of passing that place again. We're here at the spot in the Atlantic Ocean, not far away from where in 2016 I almost lost my life and had to be taken off my boat, this boat, by a helicopter when the Portuguese man of war landed on my legs. And in terrible pain they wanted to come and airlift me. I felt my heart. Maybe that I lost my life is exaggerated, but I was in the water. If I would not have climbed on the boat fast enough, I was so shaking from pain and crampy that I wonder if I would have come out. But it all worked out. I didn't abandon the boat, but used a remedy that we found that they use in Hawaii. Crushed vitamin C tablets. I was alone on board. I've just bought a new boat in Key West, Florida. I love the simple lines. The boat that's now become Twilight. At that time she was only 32 feet before I extended her to 41. She had no build up, no steering house. She had an engine hanging off the back beam. But she was so simple and easy to sail and could do good speeds. And we started the 5000 mile trip from Key West, Florida to Eimuiden in the Netherlands. She sailed so incredibly nice. I enjoyed that trip so much. I sailed from Key West down the coast of America to Miami, crossed to the north of the Bahamas and went up to Bermuda. And in Bermuda I waited for good weather. 
the 1800 mile trip towards the Azores. And when the waves grow bigger, it should be surfing off the waves with good speeds. We'd slam in them with the floats, but because they were so sharp like old V shapes, she would actually cut quite nicely in it as well. But she was also a wet boat. And it didn't take very long, but I was wet and things inside got wet. Of course there was no dock house, nothing to hide behind. And if the waves were coming a little bit from the front, the spray would come over and if you stuck your head out, you just were wet. And this was something that I wanted to change. So on the trip I just built myself a tiny little dodger. Something from some pieces of PVC foam and plastic and good old duct tape. And it worked, it did a great job. I had a little window on the front, I could see things. And it kept everything a lot drier. Surfing off those waves was giving quite big forces on the rudder system. And as always, Enox looks very strong but can really fool you. And in my case, it did. And I'm so happy that I have bought an InReach Explorer. Next to the fact it's a navigator, it has a 24-7 SOS button to satellite. It only is by text, but it did a great job for me when I needed help. Of course I have no pictures of what happened. Because when I realized that the Enox rudder hinge had broken, I quickly got myself on top of the rudder, partly hanging in the water. And while I was repairing the rudder hinge with rope, a Portuguese man of war landed on my kneecap and sling all his poisonous straps around my legs. An immense pain, very hard to describe. And I felt shaking, I felt my heart. I was really wondering what was gonna happen. Lucky enough I quick climbed out of the water quick enough and I pressed that SOS button. And the system worked very well. Somebody started helping me by sending me texts, asking me questions what was going on and trying to advise me what to do. They were gonna send a helicopter to take me off the boat. I had to agree to abandon the boat when they would show up, which I wasn't willing to do. But it was a bit of a hard choice, because I was shaking so much and I did not know if it was going to get worse. And if they advised maybe to pick me off, maybe I should, but I've just bought a boat. And actually decided not to, I stayed on the boat. And when they hang up, the first of kin person for me contacted me straight away. The person had been informed what was going on and had done research and figured out that in Hawaii, they crush vitamin C tablets and mix them with bicarbon soda. Or, since I don't have that, I mixed it with water and made it as thick as toothpaste. It's supposed to take 80% of the pain away and works better than vinegar because it doesn't run off. It actually dries up on top of the scabs. I forced myself to finish the lashing of the rudder and put everything on autopilot. Another. 100 or 80 miles to go to reach Flores Azores. It was not going to be a non-stop trip anymore. I had to stop. I needed medical help. I did not know what was going to happen. The island looked absolutely beautiful with its black and its green against the blue sea, the blue ocean that I've been watching. And seeing a waterfall coming off the rocks and looks like it lands on the beach looks absolutely stunning. Flores is a beautiful island and the people were very nice. The little harbor, really small, an old port where they did a lot of hunting, hunting whales, was still there and I could put twilight along the quay. The usual paintings on the walls, not as much as in Horta, but it was definitely the Azores. After I tied the boat on I went to sleep be woken up by a naval officer completely dressed in white because there was a festival in the village and he looked at my legs and said I would be marked for the rest of my life but he said since nothing was really infecting I did not need to do anything else just keep a good eye on it 
In the small little harbour there was another interesting trimaran. One of the pioneers in foaling was laying there. Quite nice to see. A very beautiful were the old whale hunting rowing boats. But I had work to do. After something to eat and to drink, I start to dismantle the rudder, take it all apart. The officer from Police Maritime had told me he would take me to somebody that could fix the stainless steel. So the job started to take this apart. It all looked quite strong. But that's the tricky thing from stainless steel. It can be cracked and you cannot see it. With all the pieces dismantled on the key, I waited till the next morning when I was picked up by the naval officer who drove me in his car up the mountains in between the flowers to this little place where somebody very good in stainless steel looked at it and started working on it. I started working on the axle, sending it and grinding it and making it ready to be put on and when he wanted to put it on and wanted to bend it a bit it broke straight away again. He was surprised as an expert. I was definitely surprised because I had that piece in my hand for at least a half an hour. And if you look at the picture you can see the only silver spot where it was still attached. Just a tiny bit, not even 10%, the rest was already broken. This is why I don't like stainless steel parts on boats and I prefer carbon fiber. And when everything was fixed and I was rested again, I left a couple days later. Beautiful weather. And the island looked even more beautiful with its waterfalls going towards the sea. And I promised myself I would come back to this place one day. To see more of this beautiful island. To spend more time. But now first I had to get my new boat to the Netherlands. Sailing another two weeks. Making it to the English Channel and ending up in the North Sea. The beautiful blue water has made place for the grey, brown green water. Knowing that I was already in Dutch territorial waters, I really started to push the boat a little bit to see what she could do. We were hitting 15 knots sometimes and I was absolutely thrilled with my new boat. She really could sail well and she was absolutely fun to sail and so easy. To seeing some of the oil rigs on the distance and knowing that in not long time from now I would have finished my 5000 mile crossing. And when I can see the smoky chimneys of Amoude, I get a phone call. It's Stein. He took me on my first trip across the North Sea. He sailed with me in the Mediterranean, delivering that boat where we were swimming in between the Portuguese men of war and the blue out. He was there when I knew nothing. And now he's sitting there waiting for me to come in for my solo trip 5,000 miles from America back to Holland. To be back sailing here four years later, thinking of this all is a bit emotional. And seeing such a dramatic sunrise with floras there in the distance, in the time of Corona. We cannot even go there, it's closed. We have to sail on to Horta. Being here the second time, this trip was actually much more difficult than the time I did it solo. Then I had good following west winds. But we did it, we are here, we're in the Azores, we're back in Europe. A difficult trip, but also a beautiful trip, with lots of memories. And in the Azores, something unexpected happened to us. We probably had to go back in quarantine, but what Peter's Sports Cafe did for all those boats that were arriving was absolutely amazing. And I hope you will watch that in the next episode. And in the Azores, in front of Horta, it seemed like all the Portuguese men of war had gathered together to say welcome to us. It was difficult to film, but there were literally with thousands there.